Hello and welcome to the Black Hat Bushcraft Channel. For me, one of the parts of bushcrafting that I really enjoy a lot is the assembling and refining of my bushcraft kit. Over the years of me doing this, I've spent a lot of time testing gear to determine what things I really like using in the woods and what things are really unnecessary or don't really work for me. When I come into the woods, for me, that's very precious time. And so I like to carry the items that are gonna help me maximize that time and get the most enjoyment out of my time out here. When you guys see me in the woods on these videos, a lot of the time, honestly, I'm here for the day. I don't always get to come and spend the night because of family obligations, business, work, so forth. Uh, things can be very hectic. So for me to get out here for a few hours or spend an afternoon, that's very important for me to de-stress. And so when I come out here again, I wanna make sure that I'm prepared to make the most of it. That's what this kit here is and what it will reflect. Um, you're not gonna see a sleep system necessarily in there other than just the emergency supplies that I would carry because again, I'm just coming out for the day. Um, if I wanted to add those elements to this kit, it can easily become an overnight kit or even a three day or more extended stay kit. So the key is for me, I'm going to come into the woods, I'm going to do some carving, maybe some cooking, build a fire, do some scouting, things like that. That's the kind of things that I'm going to be carrying in this kit. And a few essentials just in case I should have to stay out here because things go bad, I'll have those items as well. I figured I'd take the time today just to unpack this and share with you what I carry since I've never done that before. Stick with me, let's open up this pack. All right, before we get started, I did go ahead and unbuckle everything on the pack just to make it a little quicker to get into. And I will mention this is the Cliff Jacobson Design Pack from Frost River. It's an excellent pack, I love it. I've been using it for a couple of years and I'm just very happy with it. And then I'm not gonna get into much detail with that pack, but if it's something people are interested in, I can definitely do a review. It is a waxed canvas pack. It's lighter than a lot of Frost River's packs, which I like because it has the traditional feel with the waxed canvas leather straps and the brass buckles but it's not so cumbersome like wax canvas packs have a tendency to be so anyway with that said this first pocket right here i went ahead and pulled out my 32 ounce water bottle and the pathfinder stainless steel cup this is uh, obviously one of the most important items in the kit because it gives you the ability to carry your water uh, to disinfect your water by boiling um, it gives you a container to cook in gives you a container to mix ingredients up in um, it's just indispensable. So this is probably the heart of my cook kit, I would say. And um, I could go on and on about that. Anyway, let's look at the next pocket. I do have, by the way, a small Kapilka spoon just for mixing up coffee and things like that. And I do have the little fish hook uh, or fish mouth spreader, which is used to suspend the bottle or the cup over the fire. Um, there's a little slip pocket right here. And in that slip pocket, I always remember it's on the side with the bottle because that's my cook kit. I just have a little handkerchief here with a twisted metal fork that I forged and a little wooden spoon that I carved. So that's kind of like my eating kit, I guess. And I, a lot of times, will try to use things that I make for myself. The longer I do this, the longer I am into the bushcraft world, the more I want to make everything that I use for myself. And I think that's just part of that evolution of a self-reliant mindset. So rather than just buy kit, I try to make as much of mine as I can. Um, and I think that that's something that will continue to evolve over time as my skill progresses. All right, opening up the main section of the pack, I have a little wool rug here. You may have seen this in some of my other videos. And I use it to wrap up my Grand Spores uh, Wildlife Hatchet. And you've seen this in other videos as well. To me, this is a one tool option. I can use this for carving, whether it be for feather sticks, bow drills, whatever. And I can use it for light chopping tasks. Um, I use this a ton. So I like having that right there in the top of my pack. This wool rug, uh, it's kind of like a saddle blanket for putting on a horse between the saddle and the horse itself. This thing has been a pillow, it's been a seat, it's been a place for me to lay out my food when I'm cooking. Um, I could go on and on. This is just a great kit item, uh, it's something that I really enjoy. It could be used as a scarf. If it's really cold outside, I can use it as a layer over my shoulders to help hold heat in. Um, it, just, it just has a lot of functions, and so that's why I keep it in my kit. Um, it's, been, it's been with me now for a couple of years, and I've just, I always use it for something. 
Lately, on my day trips, I've been carrying a hammock, and part of that was I was happy to get one of JB's uh, nice hammocks. It's a real lightweight hammock. Um, straps are in here with it, and when I come out on my day trip, sometimes I just want to relax, kick, kick back, take a little nap or rest. So I hang this up in a tree. It takes three to five minutes to hang up, or let, you know, sometimes less if you're really quick and you find two good trees. Now I have a place to sit, lay, or so forth, so it just makes the afternoon more enjoyable. And that could become part of my sleep system if I were to camp out here. Looking, I guess, with the, with the hammock is the tarp. Now, for years and years, I've carried a Mylar space blanket type tarp, which everybody carries those emergency uh, blankets. The Grabber model is the one that I carry. But lately, I've been kind of testing out carrying this Nomex tarp, which came from Campcraft Outdoors, uh, Jason Hunt's company. Um, he doesn't make this anymore, but the thing I like about this is it's a standard five by seven size, like the emergency space blanket. But Nomex is highly abrasion resistant and it's highly flame retardant. So you could actually take a cigarette lighter and hold to this thing and it's hard to get it to burn. Um, it's just a very, very nice heavy duty tarp and it's got more of a traditional feel to it. So I've been experimenting keeping this with me instead of the other. Um, I'm still, I'm still trying to decide how I feel about that. In here, you've got stakes, uh, guy lines, and ridge lines, and, and prussics, and everything that I need to put this tarp up. So this is an all-in-one kit for an emergency shelter. My Kapilka cup, we talked about that recently in a video. It's just one of those things that's a comfort item when I make coffee, tea, or whatever in camp. I just enjoy using it. I do have my compass, pace beads, uh, my waypoint marker, my whistle, all of that's in one kit here. I call it my navigation kit, but it's also signaling because I've got the mirror with the compass. It's the Sunto MC2. I'm not going to open all that up, but just compass. Uh, there's an orange bandana, a whistle, pay speeds. That's basically what this is. Signaling and navigation. All right, I have my headlamp inside of here, which is just a Petzl Tactica. It's an old one I've had for years and three spare batteries. So I have that. Um, in case I end up out here after dark, I've got that lighting if I need it. All right, um, my fire kit. This is just a simple char tin, which I have used quite a bit. And inside of here, I have multiple ways to start fire. It's a little gritty. I've got a uh, magnifying lens. I had a magnifying lens. I've got flint and steel that I forged. I've got several pieces of flint, fat wood, uh, mini ferro rod, some surefire, steel wool, char cloth, all the stuff. All the, the fire kit stuff that you would expect. So I have a comprehensive fire kit in my pack. Alright, next I have something that a lot of people may not think to carry, toilet paper. Yes, I can improvise without this toilet paper. It's good obviously as toilet paper, but it's also good for signaling, trail marking, tender. You can use this in a a bunch of different ways so if you think about it this is worth the wait because it weighs nothing and uh, it's definitely a great resource very multi-functional I should say all right so the next item is just a little leather Sami style sewing kit and this is one that I made from scratch and what we have in here is just some sewing needles some artificial sinew a couple of safety pins some number 12 bank line and this is something that I can do some basic repairs with on my clothing or my kit if something should fail. And again, I like carrying this just because of something that I made for myself. And again, that's my ultimate goal is to make as much of my kit as I can. All right, next I have a, a little waxed canvas tool roll. And I don't always carry this. It just depends on what I'm planning to do on any given day. But I really like this tool roll and it offers me several important tools. So I have here a packable draw knife, which is a Pathfinder knife shop one. I have a little Mora carving knife here. And I forget the exact model, but it's the very small one. It's an excellent knife. I really enjoy carving with this. Fine detail work. You can see here, this is a Mora spoon knife or crooked knife. I have a little DC3 sharpening stone that I can touch up my knife or axe if I need to. And over here on this side, I have a couple of needles. One is a nice little bone needle that I made for myself, and the other is a large sail needle, which I can use as an awl or for uh, some heavy-duty stitching. 
So again, I don't always carry this roll with me, but I do a lot of the time just because I like having these items with me in case I want to use them. Especially the little Mora carving knife and the spoon knife, those are things that I like to take out a lot of times when I'm sitting in my camp. All right, so moving into containers that I can cook in. This is the GSI stainless steel kettle. I recently made this little leather bush pot strap on a video if you're interested. This is one of those pieces of kit. I've had it for years and I've used it many, many times. I've always enjoyed it. And I'll go for a period of time where I don't ever pick this thing up. I never carry it. And then all of a sudden I'll say, I want to carry that with me. I'll put it in my pack and then I won't take it out. I'll keep using it, really enjoy it. I'll go for a while and then I'll switch it back up again. I, a while back I switched it for the Pathfinder stainless steel kettle, which I really like. Um, I'll switch it out and just bring a bush pot and use that. But um, whenever I put this thing in my pack, I always seem to really like it. I've used it for cooking everything from dry beans and sausage to obviously pots of coffee. It does all of it really well. So I like this container. Here I have just a little cooking kit. And again, this is one of those things that changes around depending. What I have here is just a little uh, cotton cloth bag. And I took all my food items out of here. I didn't want to get caught up, you know, showing you food. But a lot of times I'll carry some food in here, whether it's some jerky trail mix, something that I'm going to be cooking, dry beans, whatever. I'll keep that stuff in here. This is just a little Kapilka saucer. It's nice to have for a little eating dish or if I collect up some wild edibles or things like that. It just gives me a place to lay those things out to carve them up, cut them up. And I do have an official bushcrafting cutting board here. Um, I really like this. It's made out of bamboo, which is an excellent material to have as a cutting board just for its properties. Something definitely to research on that. Um, but anyway, I have that little thing. And the reason I got that is because it fits perfect inside the pan. And this is just a Paderna, I think is how you say it, carbon steel skillet. It's a nice packable model. And this thing has seen a lot of hours on my fire. Uh, I've enjoyed it and it always cooks up some good food whether it's breakfast food or frying stuff up like sweet potatoes I did a video on that um, whatever this is a great great camp cooking item that i've enjoyed a lot All right and that's everything that's in the heart of the pack except for there's a little piece of waxed canvas from my tent smith's tarp that came as a scrap i guess it was a patch for the tarp i have a couple of sticks of fat wood some real good fat wood so when I need this stuff, I don't have to go searching for it. I already have it right there in the bottom of my pack, wrapped up in a piece of oil cloth. So right here on the front pocket, I have just a little Swiss Army knife. I don't always carry that, but it is a nice tool sometimes when I'm whittling around camp. And mainly I enjoy having the awl and the uh, little small folding saw that's on that. I have uh, another piece of orange cloth, which I can use as a waypoint. Uh, Corporal's Corner, Sean Kelly did an excellent video recently talking about waypoints. Something is taught at the Pathfinder School and I'm sure it's taught other places, but basically you hang this on a tree or you tie it to a pole and you set it up where you can see it. And I can walk anywhere around here and as long as I can see this orange piece of cloth, I know where my waypoint is where I can go back to continue my navigation from. That's basically what it's for. I have a 55 gallon 3 mil drum liner. That has 101 uses at least. I have a buff, which during the hot season, I can wear this on my head. Uh, keep the sun off my head, keep the bugs off my head or out of my ears, because you can pull it down over your ears. Really enjoy having a buff. Um, I use that a lot when it's, when it's hot outside. It also keeps the sweat from getting in my eyes. I have a nice pair of heavy leather gloves. Obviously, when you're working with your axe or you're working around pulling logs out and things like that, it's good to have something to protect your hands. So I always carry leather gloves. The last thing I have here is the Soldier's Prayer Book. This came from uh, Fort Macon in North Carolina, and it's just some collections of some old classic hymns, um, some psalms and different things like that. And occasionally around camp, I'll just pull it out and do a little bit of reading because it's always good to have the Word with you. Um, on this side pocket here, I have my Baco Laplander folding saw. And that's kind of become like a ubiquitous item that bushcrafters have to have. So I keep that there where I can get to it very easily without opening the pack. And I have a full size six inch by half inch ferrocerium rod and I keep it in a little leather sheath which I also made for myself. So again, another one of those pieces that, that I made for my own kit. 
I have a little leather tinder pouch. This again, something that I hand sewed for myself, which I like to uh, bring that out when I go into the woods because I can collect tinder and other resources, fat wood, you know, tulip poplar bark, whatever I find, I can just stuff it in here. And when I get to my camp, I'm ready to go. All right, so I always keep this small little first aid kit in my pack. It's a multi-use item in a lot of ways. It's a closable metal tin with a couple of ranger bands on it, just bicycle inner tube. So that can become an emergency char tin if necessary. Um, in here, I have some basic first aid supplies, like some basic band-aids, uh, which are not 100% necessary, but it's nice having them. I have a orange big lighter, a sail needle, a uh, pair of tweezers to pull off ticks. Um, I have some ibuprofen, Tylenol, antihistamine, uh, like Benadryl, just in case I should have like a severe allergic reaction or something. So just basic stuff that I found over the years that I may need. Uh, along with my first aid, I have just some pine and uh, plantain salve that I put together. Uh, it's nice to have that for little, just something that you can touch up little uh, irritations and stuff on your skin. I have a one inch roll of Gorilla Tape. Again, one of those things that has 101 uses. I'm not gonna take the time to go through all of that, but obviously you can use it to repair gear. It can be used as emergency tender. It can be used as an emergency bandage, so on and so forth. Uh, cordage. So I carry a lot of different types of cordage because when I go into the woods, I use cordage a lot. I've got number 12 bank line. I've got number 36 bank line, a couple of spools also have just some hanks of pieces here that I've used for hanging a toggle, you know, hanging my bottle over the fire with a toggle. I carry a little roll of jute. This is like one buck. And when I'm doing some lashing or something in my camp and it's not something that's heavy duty, instead of wasting my bank line, I'll just use this jute. If it's just something temporary or something that's not really important, structural, like my shelter or whatever, obviously I'm gonna use the better cordage. But if it's something I just need to bind together, this works just fine and it saves my more important cordage, my bank line or my paracord. And I always just keep a little paracord in case I wanna throw up a ridge line uh, or a clothes line. My clothes get wet and I wanna dry them out, something like that. That'll give me something strong that I can hang those from. And that's it. Uh, that's basically what I carry. Um, if you, if you understand the Pathfinder school concept of the 10 C's, you can pretty much see that all the 10 C's are covered with the container, the cutting tool, the cordage, the cover, the compass, the candling device being my headlamp, um, the canvas cell needle, the cotton cloth, it's all there. Um, and then just a few extras of things that I found that I like to have. I didn't mention it, but of course I have my knife on my side and a big lighter and a ferro rod all in my pants pockets. Obviously, my first layer of shelter is my clothing, so when I go in the woods, I try to choose appropriate clothing, of course, with the hat. Uh, but anyway, that's it. Um, some, sometimes I really find these kit videos to be interesting, and I pick up from other people uh, an item here or there that I like to add to my kit, so hopefully this will give somebody some ideas out there. This just is what I happen to be carrying today. If, you, if we came back tomorrow, there might be something a little different, but this is the heart of the kit that I carry on most days. All right, I wanna thank you guys for taking the time to tune in for this quick informal showing of my kit. I could go on and on about these different items and make this video ridiculously long, but it's just a show and tell of what's in the bag. If you have any questions, always feel free to ask. I'm always happy to answer. I try to answer all my comments here on the channel. Sometimes it takes me a little while, but I eventually will get to them. So if you ask a question, I will answer it to the best of my ability. I appreciate you guys' interest and your support, and I definitely hope to be talking to you with another video as soon as possible. And until the next one, take care and God bless.